What's up, people? It's your girl, Adeola. So I got the shock of my life this week when the former chief of defense staff, Alex Badi, said that they've not bought any weapons for the soldiers since 2006. Uh, and if I go down memory lane, I think the last time any piece of equipment was bought for the Nigerian army was on APCs that were bought in, nine, in 2006. What? Inadequate equipment, obsolete equipment, aeroplanes. In fact, we are the ones that are flying probably over the oldest fighter aeroplanes in the whole world. Alpha jets, we bought them in 1981. Stop it. I had them the first time. Eh? Are you serious? Hey, yeah. Hey, what? Hey, what? This is the chief of defense staff. No, be so. Eh? 2006. Ah, Uluwag That is nine years ago. Eh? With what have we been fighting Boko Haram all these years? Is this man all right? I mean, who told us in February that they bought two new jets filled with weapons? No, be him. Eh? Is he throwing Jonathan under the bus now? Eh? Like everybody is now throwing Jonathan under the bus. It's either they bought some weapons around election time or they lied to us that they bought weapons. Just like he lied the other time that he said they've reached ceasefire agreement with Boko Haram. Remember? I wish to inform this audience that a ceasefire agreement has been concluded between the federal government of Nigeria and Al Sunnah Lidawa Uwal Jihad. So remember me, I was dancing on this show saying that our girls will be back because they said the Chibo girls will be released the following week. Boko Haram came out and said nothing was signed. But uh, how can someone be so wicked? That is what I don't understand. Assuming that he's, he's saying the truth, that they didn't buy any weapons since 2006, why was he denying all the media reports about lack of weapons for our soldiers to fight? And you had no weapons and you didn't say this until at least 15,000 civilians were killed. Not to talk about the number of soldiers that died. Do we even know how many Nigerian soldiers were killed by Boko Haram? No. Is there any record? I don't think so. How was he sleeping at night knowing that you were sending soldiers, young men and women, to fight without weapons? Ah, no, 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 no. This man should be arrested. Arrested and tried. And while he's in prison, he needs to apologize to the whole country, to all the mothers that have lost their sons, all the wives that have lost their husband, all the little kids that have lost their parents because they were fighting with Boko Haram without weapons. Remember that documentary that the Nigerian soldiers had no adequate weapons and that they were the ones buying their own uniforms? You're not issued the kit, you buy the kit yourself. You, you have to buy the uniform and the kit yourself? Yes, you buy them. I bought mine myself. That's incredible. And that whenever they got injured, they had to pay for their own hospital bills. So this is what they gave you after your injury? His unit, he says, was outgunned. Boko Haram with bigger, longer-range weapons. The army won't pay for the drugs, even though you got your injury fighting Boko Haram. They're not paid for the drug. In fact, we all saw what happened to that pilot that was beheaded by Boko Haram. The military denied knowing the guy. And what did this man do at that time? He arrested several soldiers who refused to fight Boko Haram, accusing them of mutiny. Not only that, he said that there were informants among soldiers working for Boko Haram. We found out that we had uh, 50 colonists in the military. Uh, that were leaking information to terrorists. Eh? So you, hey, I'm really baffled right now. Eh? You knew all this at that time and you kept quiet? Why didn't you do something about that at that time? Now you're opening your mouth. You have a lot to say. And when you were in power and you could save lives, you did not do anything. I, I can't stand people like this. Let's not forget that in October of last year, this same man, uh, Bade, sent helicopter to evacuate his own family just before Boko Haram attacked Mubi. Everybody else was left to their fate and Boko Haram came, killed so many people and took over Mubi. He later denied that he sent helicopter Helicopter, but the question remains, how did his family escape? And you know, it's not just him. He's not the only one to be blamed. Former President Good Lord Jonathan should be probed. How can you be president? You're allocating $5 billion every year for the purchase of weapons, and you won't know that the weapons were not purchased? Like, how can you not know? Wait a minute. Is it possible that Jonathan doesn't know about this? The weaponry of the military was so degraded that they weren't able to hold on to these towns and villages. When the budget now is about $5 billion a year for security. Information is that these things were not there. I was not in charge. Thank you, thank you, my brother. I forgot we have that tape. Can you imagine? Did he say that he was not in charge? I was not in charge. Yeah, right. He said that. Okay, okay. Now it's safe for me to say that Jonathan must be proved. Like, really? Even though he said he was not in charge, his body language tells me otherwise. Ah, shalom, maju, bye bye. Ah, ah. Let's say he didn't know about it. After the reporter brought up the issue of the money, shouldn't he start investigating what happened to the money? Apparently, $32 billion was allocated in the last five years. Were these people sharing the money among themselves? Eh, and civilians and soldiers were left to die? Like, really? No, no, no. In fact, you can't tell me that Jonathan didn't know about this.
this because why would he threaten to withdraw soldiers from Bonu state when the governor of Bonu complained that Boko Haram was better equipped than the Nigerian soldiers? Remember that time he told the governor that no matter how frustrated you are, you don't make this kind of statement. I'm like, why shouldn't he make that kind of statement? Remember, why was he trying to prevent the governor from saying soldiers were not well equipped if there isn't something that Jonathan was hiding? That's why I said he needs to be probed. And speaking of the money allocated for weapons, is it true that uh, the man, Alex Badi, has an investment company registered here in the US? I mean, someone sent me this and I'm like, what? Herrick Investment Incorporated. The date on this says November 6, 2014, the year that he became the chief of defense staff. An investment company in Florida after his appointment. Huh, investment firm. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. I can believe that they gave the man a royal welcome back to his hometown after Buhari fired him. I'm like, Nigerians would never cease to amaze me. What did he do for you when he was there? And you're giving him this kind of welcome back? While I'm hoping that very soon they will release all the soldiers arrested for refusing to face Boko Haram without weapons, I hope that this man is probed so that the person that has taken over after him would be serious with his job. And I think President Gulo Jonathan should be probed as well. And speaking of which, did you all see the pictures of the police barracks in uh, Oju Elegba. Hey! Oju Elegba! My father and oh my god! This is where police officers live? Hey! Whoa! Hey! Hey! Niger! No wonder the guy said that we live like rats. Yes, Nigerians want us to be their friends. Hey. That is to say that is why they collect 50-50 naira from drivers on the road. I hope that something is done and done on time because nobody should live under this kind of circumstance. No, this is wrong. At the same time though, Oga Olopa, eh, in Adwell, and this is not an excuse to collect money from drivers. Yes, because some drivers live in Ili Alamo, so you understand, they live in worse situations than this, yet you collect money from them. Eh? Being miserable is not an excuse to make the lives of other people miserable. When things are like this, why don't you go on a strike? Shebi, it is the government that should be responsible for your comfort, not innocent drivers. Eh? So stop making life miserable for other people just because, you know, this is how you live. I, I pity you. I feel very bad for you. I cannot imagine what you're going through, but don't make life miserable for the rest of us because of that as well. Eh? You're not do well. You're not do well. Guess what? I don't know much. I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Burundi, I don't know why some African leaders have continued to prefer shedding the blood of their own people instead of just stepping down and letting other people take over power. You guys know that since that election that the Burundian president, uh, Pierre Nkurunziza, insisted on running for third time, since that election, at least 100 people have been killed, 100 civilians at least. Take a look. The opposition condemns the president's re-election as unconstitutional. <laughs> Human rights groups have accused Burundian security forces and the Imbonera Kure militia group of attacking and intimidating the population. Local human rights activists have documented dozens of arrests. It's so sad because the violence is now from both sides, the president's side, the opposition side. A close ally of Mr. President was shot last week in a drive-by shooting. Uh, not only that, a very prominent activist was also shot in the face. Uh, take a look at this. Pierre Claver publicly opposed incumbent president Pierre Nkurunziza's bid for a third term. The activist is recovering in hospital after being shot in the face on Monday. His condition is considered stable. The solution to this would just be for Mr. President to just step down. When it's so clear that the people don't want him, why would you force yourself on people? I'll continue to give you updates on what is happening in Burundi. I can't wait for peace to be restored back in Burundi. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Cameroon. So did you guys hear that Cameroon deported Nigerians? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Let me say that again. I can repeat it myself. Cameroon deported Nigerians, yo. 2,500 Nigerians. Jay, what a shame. Niger, what a shame. The giante of Africa. Cameroon is deporting you. <laughs> Cameroonians are complaining that the excess of Boko Haram is spilling into their country. Boko Haram is now attacking in Cameroon. Last month, they had about three different attacks. At least 44 people died. Although Cameroonians are saying that up to 100 people were killed. Can you imagine? So now Cameroon decided to deport Nigerians out of Cameroon. They deported these people just a day after our president, Mahmoud Buhari, visited Cameroon. Imagine that embarrassment, eh? Nigeria. If we don't fix our issues, eh? This is why I've been saying that Ogabuari has been too slow. 
whole regarding Boko Haram. If we don't do something, the whole world is laughing at us. You need to read some of the comments that people wrote when Cameroon deported Nigerians. It's refreshing to hear of a country that cares enough for its citizens to deport terrorists. Who snap Nigerians? Are we the ones referred to as Cameroon? Now you refer to us as a terrorist eh? because of our problem of today? Eh? By the way, Cameroon, it's not fair. This is not nice. Now we are terrorists. There is God though. I mean, I, I don't blame Cameroon for doing this. At the same time, how, how about be nice now? Good job, Cameroon. If it pains Nigeria, let her follow suit. Enough of all these bloody killings. Wow. People are not laughing with Nigeria right now. I hope Mr. President will do whatever he needs to do to get this issue solved once and for all. Remember you told us that two months after you get in power, you will get rid of Boko Haram. It has been two months already. Eh? Whatever you are doing, Nigerians have been deported. 2,500 of them. Can you imagine what they are going through? I feel sorry for Cameroon that Boko Haram is getting to their country. Now they are killing their people. I mean, I, I wouldn't be happy if I were Cameroon myself. I'll probably do the same thing. So I'm hoping that this will be a wake up call for Nigeria to do whatever it needs to do to take care of its business. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So why are people writing me based on what I said in my last episode that uh, former president Goodluck like Jonathan should be credited for the refineries that are working in Nigeria? Am I missing something? I mean, if Jonathan is to be credited, as of 2011, there were reports that $1.7 billion, dollars not Naira, was already spent on TAM, that is the turnaround maintenance, of the four refineries in the last 12 years before 2011. Yet, none of them worked at reasonable capacity. But you know, I'm not going to talk about what happened before 2012, because in January of 2012, when Jonathan removed subsidy and everybody started protesting, the price of petrol skyrocketed. Remember how everybody was protesting? That was when they took us and by the way this title wasn't accurate because the federal government never signed the turnaround maintenance contract with the original builders of the refineries but at that time they told us they would sign the contract that week and that this would ease the price of petrol this is what they said already they've given us an aggressive timetable and they've assured us that within 24 months all three major refineries will be producing up to 90 percent capacity utilization she said the she here is referring to madam Alison madwake the petroleum minister and they said this in january of 2012 if it would take 24 months for our refineries to work that means by the end of last year 2014 our refineries were supposed to be producing at 90 percent capacity listen to this with this policy in place millions of jobs will be created and the economy will become very viable for investments alison madweke stated this is what they told us in january of 2012 when we were protesting but in july of the same year there was a breaking news that two of of the four refineries have packed up while the remaining two were producing at 25 percent of installed capacity so they never signed that contract that they announced that they would sign at the beginning of 2012 instead two refineries went out of business six months after that so how can you tell me that jonathan should be credited Ho hold on let I i'm not even done the same year we had another breaking news that nnpc plans to repair three refineries with 152 billion naira 152 billion this was december of 2012 and in the same article, Madam Madweke told us that 32 million dollars had already been paid for the materials needed. Did our refineries work after that? No. Two years after that, in October of 2014, another breaking news. Refineries operated at 10.5% capacity in June. Remember how they promised us that the refineries would work at 90% capacity by the end of 2014, the one I just talked about? What happened? Despite all the money budgeted and allocated to fix the refinery uh, in October, of 2014 they were telling us that refineries are now operating at 10 percent 10 percent capacity and then in november of last year the petroleum minister told us that oh at this point we just have to continue importing for the next 20 years i talked about this in episode 142 i titled it nmpc to scam nigerians for another 20 years make sure you watch it she told us at that time that we will continue to import for the next 20 years and in february of this year 2015 while we were getting ready for elections she said that we are no longer giving the turnaround contract to the original builders of the refineries i'm like what madam what happened since 2012 you've been telling us that you are signing a contract with the original builders what happened now you're telling us you're no longer working with the original builders she said no they are too expensive it is now local engineers that will repair the refineries and i was really confused and then she said this will cost us 99 billion naira to pay the local engineers she never explained what happened to all the billions that they've been allocating in the name of fixing the refineries all those years in the same month of february 
of this year by the way. She told us that the turnaround maintenance had not taken place due to the level of decay at the plants. And in March of this year, while everybody was getting ready for election, uh, when we had fuel scarcity, Buari accused Jonathan that he was responsible for the refineries not working. And I did not hear Jonathan say, no, I'm not responsible. I'm working on it. The refineries will soon start. Neither did I hear the petroleum minister say, no, we are working on it. Very soon, we will start producing oil in our refineries. Instead, she said in the first quarter of 2016, our four refineries would start producing oil. So, vote for Jonathan so that he can complete the good work that he started. That is what they were telling us then. And when was election again, my brother? Yes, March of this year, March 28th. So, are you now telling me that it was after Jonathan uh, lost that election that he now started working on the refineries? Like, seriously? Knowing how PDP was flaunting Jonathan's achievements at the time of election, it's interesting that they never mentioned him fixing the refineries. Oh my God, how could they forget that? In case you've not noticed since May 29th of this year, everything is beginning to work in Nigeria. All of a sudden, has Buhari changed anything at the EFCC? No, but suddenly they've done more in the last two months than they ever did throughout Mr. Jonathan's tenure. Although all these people that they've been picking up, the EFCC, if you are just picking them up and they are being built and nothing happens, you are wasting your time. If you don't put anybody in jail, we are not convinced that this administration is serious in fighting corruption. Now, what I'm saying is the Jonathan's administration made sure that the refineries did not work because their friends, the oil marketers, would not make money if the refineries were working. I mean, when Buhari came in, the Department of State Security, the DSS, they probed SWAP and OPAS, that is the crude for petroleum product exchange agreement and um, the offshore processing agreement that was signed by NNPC and oil traders between 2011 and 2014. All of them are friends with the former president, the petroleum minister, Madweke, and uh, the finance minister, Madam Ngozi, and they all made billions of dollars as oil marketers. These oil marketers, they knew that once Buhari got in power, that the refineries would start working and they would no longer be patronized. That was why they insisted on getting paid before the inauguration of Buhari, which led to a serious fuel scarcity at the end of May. Am I the only one that recollect all these things? Nigerians, we suffer from short-term memory syndrome. By the way, this article was saying that there's nothing wrong with the refineries all this while. It's just that they didn't allow them to work. That would be interesting, really, because someone else have done this analysis on Naira Land. Uh, passing short, that's the name of the person. And the title is Buari Not Jonathan is Responsible for the Refineries Resuming Production. Make sure that you check it out. But you guys know that I don't really know much. Maybe Mr. Jonathan actually came back to work behind the scenes after he lost the elections. Who knows? Who knows? But what do I know? Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So before I read emails today, I found out that a Biafran group on Facebook uploaded the episode that I did on the solution to Biafra radio few weeks ago, they uploaded it on their Facebook page. So they only uploaded where I blame the Nigerian government. They took out where I blame uh, Radio Biafra. And this video has a lot of views already. So a lot of people are thinking that I'm in support of Biafra. I'm in support of the country dividing. No, no, this is a disclaimer right here. I am not in support of dividing Nigeria. I stand for unity. I talked about why the Nigerian government should be blamed and why Biafra Radio should also be blamed. It's so not fair, eh? So that is a disclaimer right there. In case you see that video it's about four minutes long i uploaded the full story on biafra radio on my youtube page my youtube page is adeola fayon yes make sure you subscribe because i always upload every single story that i talk about on this show on my youtube page so the email that i'll be reading today is from joshua ayosun and he's writing me about how nigerian students that are studying abroad under the nigerian national scholarship have been stranded for like eight months can you imagine that the nigerian government will sponsor these people to go to school abroad and then they refuse to pay them their stipend this is so not fair so right now nigerian students are like beggars in this country so a lot of them are now being expelled from school some of them that finish their courses and they don't have money to to take a flight to return home now they will be deported can you imagine that shame and the nigerian government committed themselves to doing this so i hope that somebody will tell president buari as well as the vice president of Simbadio, this was the commitment of the previous administration so they have to uphold this because nigerian students are suffering abroad so that's all the time that I have for emails today. Please keep sending your emails to adeola.keepingitreal at gmail.com. All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.